Hello, my name is Aditya. My name is Yifei. Hello, my name is Soham. Hello, my name is Anand. Why is learning states of matter important to understand space? Space has many interesting phenomena, all of which can be understood by understanding how matter works in different states under different conditions. For example, phenomena caused by the sun are normally caused because of how plasma, a superheated state of matter works. As the sun and stars are a form of plasma, every natural concept boils down to matter. And therefore you can only understand these concepts by understanding matter. Space is the most natural thing in the universe. Without understanding states of matter, we cannot get a rich understanding of space's inner workings. Matter is all around us. Any object that has mass is matter. Matter is in everything. Your PS5 is matter. Your chemistry textbook is matter. And the device you're watching is on right now is matter. But matter can come in different forms. States of matter are different forms that matter can take other different in under different conditions. For example, water is a liquid. What do you drink? A state of this is also a state of matter. Heating it up gives us vapor, a gas, such as the air you breathe, which is also a gas. And cooling water down gives us ice, a solid. Heat up the vapor will even more make a plasma, a superheated state of matter. Most 910 condensates is an artificial form of matter that has been cooled down to just above absolute zero. The truth of the matter is, get yeah, the truth of the matter. Anyways, the truth of the matter is that the space is almost like a vacuum, but not entirely. A vacuum is a place where no matter is present. Space has some matter, for example, asteroids, so it is not quite a vacuum. On Earth, we usually see states of matter change under different conditions. In space, you won't see this very often. Instead, you will see states of matter react differently under different conditions. So how do states of matter and molecular behavior relate to space? So the hotter a state of matter is, the more particle movement it has. This means that Bose-Einstein condensates as the least particle movement, also known as molecular, molecular movement, because it is the coldest state of matter. Plasma is a superheated state of matter and therefore has the most particle movement. If you leave an ice cube out in the sun, the particles get heated and have more energy, and this causes a change in the state of matter, a solid to a liquid in which the liquid is water. Remember how we said that in space, you will barely see matter state change? Instead, you will notice happenings that are a result of molecular behavior. The sun reaches 2 million degrees Fahrenheit. Because it's so hot, the particles move extremely quickly and the sun isn't able to hold on to these particles. They stream away from the star. If the solar wind is powerful, it can cause power outages, damage electronics, so you can't use your laptop anymore, and damage your own DNA. Galaxies don't seem to have enough matter inside of them to keep creating new planets, formations, and stars. Galactic recycling is when stars excrete their own gas, and eventually all of that dense gas forms together to create a new object, dense enough to become a star. We're sure you heard of the Big Bang Theory. In case you haven't, we'll tell you real quick. The Big Bang is the most prominent theory amongst astronomers about how the universe came to be. This is what the theory states. In the beginning, the universe was a bunch of, a bunch of very hot particles in one singular point. Suddenly, an explosion occurred and everything blasted out of this one point, faster than the speed of light. And there was a lot of space for everything to go. So as all the particles spread out, they cooled down. So since um, they haven't been moving anymore, as we said earlier, when something doesn't move, that means there's less energy. And so since there's less energy, that must mean that it's much more colder. The hotter something is, the more energy in the particles there is. But since it's not really moving any much anymore, it's going to be very cool. So then these atoms or particles group together and eventually create stars and galaxies. Now it's time to talk about our career path. Our team picked a laser technician as our career path that we wanted to discuss. Laser technicians work in a variety of fields, but we will mostly talk about aerospace. They need to at least get an associate degree in electric or laser technology. They will also need to know physics and mechanics. Some states also require them to take a state administered test. Laser technicians in the beginning do more simple tasks. These tasks include helping assemble laser machinery. After they have more experience and work more, they can do more complicated tasks that can help their company much more. Lasers in space are used for environmental and remote sensing. In remote sensing, a laser is stuck onto a satellite that orbits any planets making a sequence of short optical pulses onto the surface. Thank you for listening.